How to connect when disconnected? A title, uh, it's a little bit thought-provoking and because we often find ourselves uh, disconnected. Or sometimes it's how often how it feels. Now, this is a picture of me climbing. I'm not very good, but I often compare teaching to climbing. Um, and the reason why I do this is that teachers and students are always connected. Students are learning, but teachers are also learning. And that collaboration is very, very important. So when I'm um, climbing or teaching, I compare myself as a teacher to the belayer, the person who stands on the ground and gives out the rope. And the student kind of goes off exploring the rocks. And sometimes that student goes really, really far over the ridge. And you can't see um, the climber anymore. You know, you're, you're becoming a lot more distant, but you're still together. And, but that togetherness for me is the key of the teaching uh, partnership <laughs> is that you can't sometimes you can't see each other you, you shout sometimes comments or uh, and there's of course there's a rope and yeah, there's a connection but the biggest connection is that there's trust and this trust is crucial to your climbing adventure students are the explorers we're just giving out the ropes and creating a safety net but it's the trust to me, that is very, very important in the classroom. If I give my students trust in their ability that they can do this, if I give them a trust that I'm there for the safety net, they, um, they feel a lot safer and more confident to explore. And this is really, I came to think about the basis of all collaboration. Whether you work together in you know, people from different disciplines or cultures, you have to trust each other's intentions. And I'll explain how I got to this uh, conclusion, which seems a very basic sentiment, but um, I'll show you it's very powerful. This is a picture of a classroom. It's called the Global Village. And this is an example of a way of how to tackle um, grand societal challenges. And this particular challenge is about globalization. This is a classroom where students at the Hanse on this side are connected virtually with a class in the United States. We call this globally connected learning. They uh, follow the same class together. They have access to the same material online. Um, a few times a year in a semester, we connect them. We create a virtual classroom. There's two, teach two professors or two teachers involved. Uh, and beside, but, uh, besides that, students also connect in small intercultural teams. So not just only do they see each other in a bigger classroom, they also work in small intercultural teams to create products by not ever seeing or meeting each other, just working online. This is very interactive and very interdependent and very, very interconnected. So what do students do, for example? They create products in the two communities, and this is the Hall in Groningen and in Arlington. Both teams in two communities had to take photos of globalization, the evidence of globalization in their local communities. And the students in Arlington came up with this photo saying that, okay, this is um, evidence of globalization. We're using a lot more bicycles. Uh, the buses are green. We're obviously really concerned with sustainability. Look how wonderful our bicycles are. There are so many. And then the students of the Hans sent this one, obviously a lot more bicycles. And when they were comparing the two, I, we asked them, okay, so, the use of bicycles, the view on how we approach, how we frame being sustainable. How, what is the global connection between these two phenomena? Uh, is this uh, on the left side in the United States like an idea, an, an, kind of an image of globalization, kind of an image of being sustainable? But we have been, we in the Netherlands have been riding our bikes for a very, very long time. Do we even think about the environment? It's just our main way of transportation. So here comes an historical context into play. So students from both sides had to compare to look for global connections in their local communities. But how do we ensure that these students stay connected? Um, through two very basic tools, which is trust, trust each other's intentions, and the other one is empathy. 
And trust and empathy seem very vague concepts. Like how do you teach students trust and empathy? Well, there are actually really uh, hands-on tools to do that. And by uh, teaching this kind of learning, and this is an example of the United States, but we also do this with students from Ghana, with, uh, from Finland. So we create online communities for students who cannot travel, but still uh, want to learn from each other's perspective. The first strategy, just to make sure that students are connected, is that before we connect them online, we really try to connect them on an individual level, not based on their cultural identities. Because we believed, after a while, if we focus in the beginning on how different we are, students tend to develop a really an us-them uh, thinking dynamic. So we try to connect them. What makes you unique as an individual and how do you connect with that other person? So really working on team spirit. Second one was practice what you preach. Now this is really important, I think, as a teacher. If I want my students to become critical thinkers or asking the question that I just asked, I need to ask those questions myself as well. I have to practice what I preach. If I want students um, to be really curious or uh, have self-reflection, I should be able to do that too. If I want them to have the confidence to fail, I should not be afraid either. So for me, it's really important to model, to practice what you preach. And we do this, for example, in my, uh, in my global classrooms, is that often technology fails and we get disconnected, or often, but it happens sometimes. And then uh, very often students, students are shocked, like, oh no, it's, the screen is black, we lost them. But me and my partner, we know exactly what we're gonna do. Not only through planning, but be al also because we have a really strong bond of trust. I know that the way she will teach, the same way that I will continue teaching my students. So we model that trust and we say, no, 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 we didn't lose them. We're still doing the same thing. And for students to see that is very important. The other strategy, when they disconnect or when they're not learning or when they're not communicating, never ever panic. When they fail, embrace it as a teachable moment. And we, we do this by, by really asking students if they're disconnected, and by disconnected I mean if they're not communicating, not emailing, not on Facebook, they're not working together, we really ask them to place themselves in someone else's shoes. Like, close your eyes. What would be the reason, what could be a reason for another person not to respond? And just by thinking about that and just imagining, hey, what could be some of those reasons? You realize there's probably always a reason. And by just by doing that very simple exercise, students learn kind of empathy just by placing yourself in the other person's shoes. So, yeah, failing is a good thing. Now, students research the complexity of globalization, particularly in this class, and they do that by experiencing how interconnected and interdependent they are. For example, if uh, one st uh, class uh, students don't um, respond, uh, their project doesn't really go well, that affects the class, they cannot respond to each other's blogs, Shanine and I have to work really late, it involves the class, we have to reschedule a class. And so they experience that one little link in the whole complex uh, uh, learning environment, one little link goes missing, it involves, has a lot of influences. So they experience like, hey, what I do really matters. And if, it de if it's that, on a very small scale, how, do, how does that work in real life? Because that's what globalization is. You're very interconnected and you're very interdependent. So basically, this type of teaching is globalization on a very small scale. So what, what students learn is how they learn and how they learn is what they learn.